Well, how have we gotten to this point? Really? There have been protests in the Capitol hallways, arguments and marching in communities and town squares, papering cars in church parking lots with side-by-side -side pictures of a candidate and an aborted fetus, alerting church members of a lawmaker's votes. That happened at my church three weekends in a row. What happened to us? We've pointed the finger at each other so much that the facts have been kicked to the curb. Things like the law of the land, or how to reduce abortion, or why we should support young children in poverty throughout their young lives and into their successful adulthood. As we all know, the abortion discussion is polarizing, especially here at the Capitol. And as I see it, Roe v. Wade secured the right of reproductive self-determination for American women. It also helped to rectify an inequality more related to poverty than gender. So here we are, a bill is in front of us with intent. And that intent seems hell-bent on making a name for those who are set to challenge Roe v. Wade by taking this Iowa test to the highest court in the land. Never mind how women's rights will be run over by the family leader bus that's headed to the US Supreme Court. Why aren't we voting on bills that help to reduce pregnancies rather than putting an onus on women that is nearly impossible to understand or comply with? Instead of talking about heartbeats, we should be talking about access to health care. We should be talking about a way that women can access birth control more easily through their physicians and through their pharmacists. Instead, we cut off Planned Parenthood and recognized and reorganized family planning clinics in Iowa, which, by the way, has been a waste of millions of dollars of taxpayer money instead of working with providers or champions who take the conversation in the director direction of the woman herself and helps her make the right one, whether that is family planning, whether it's preconception health, prenatal care, or other needs, including abortive services. No one can really give us any measurements on how well those new clinics, some dental offices, are performing, or how the clinics are contributing to the health of Iowa women. What should be happening is an effort to talk about prenatal care and having a healthy baby. And if they don't want to, or they aren't ready to have children, there should be an opening to talk about birth control. Why aren't we talking about that? We should be helping women transform their health care experience. And one of the main obstacles that prevents a patient today from using contraception is ignorance. Not only the patients, but sometimes even her health care providers. We must keep policies that safeguard women's health rights and not make physicians or health care providers afraid to practice what is legal in Iowa. Thank you.